reason why a woman feels you is because what you're actually doing is honest. Click the link below and get your tickets to the Game Kings 2, the definition of a man, documentary screening that's going to be held in Miami on October 26th, 2024. You'll be the first to watch the documentary, and then after the documentary, you'll be able to participate in a question and answer session with the Game Kings live. Space is limited, so click the link below and get your tickets now. I get what you're saying. Let's say, so for the talking at versus talking to, when you talk to a person, you recognize them. You see them for who they are. You deal with what's in front of you, right? The more directly I'm talking to a person, I can assess how they feel, what they're thinking, and what they're sending to me and what I'm receiving. Like you said, a tennis match, it's a conversation is the same. It's send, receive, send, receive. It's constant messages. All life is about messages. Why a tiger has stripes, why the eyes are in the front, and why the prey, the eyes are on the side. It communicates something. All communication is sending and receiving. So as you talking about, you know, expressing that or, or giving it, putting it on how you feel about somebody, it could have been worded a lot better, but that's what you roughly said, right? Put it on which, how you feel towards somebody. Yeah, like uh, making them feel your presence. Right, like... right. The more present you are, the more they feel your presence. For example, I'm looking you directly in your eyes, and people are looking at me, look at you, and feeling that presence that of the connection that we're having in this conversation. If I was you know, phone now, I'm like, damn, man, you know, it, there's no presence, because I'm not present. So if you're all in your head, distracted, the bird flies by while you're saying, hey, hello, nice to meet you. Instead of shaking her hand, looking in her eyes, and slowing down, it creates a presence, because you're present. It's, it's, it's straightforward, <clears throat> but you got to get out of your own way. Can you ask your question again? Because I walked in as you were asking it. Ask it exactly how you asked it the first time. Um, it's a question about... Um, it's like making somebody um, feel you, like, you know, your, your presence. Uh, okay. You get better with, like, you know, interaction okay. with Okay, okay. Like, in terms of dealing with women and stuff. Okay. Well, when you talk to anybody, okay, it could be same sex, it could be opposite sex, there's always an energy you give off, mm -hmm. right? Even when you're nervous, okay, when you're confident. That's why if you ask any woman, they'll tell you confidence is a sexy trait in a man. Right? Because there's a certain energy, a certain aura that you give off when you're confident. It doesn't guarantee that something's going to happen, but people can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're nervous, if you have low self-esteem, things like that. When you talk, people can sense it in you. So when you talk about making people feel your presence, it's not so much about you consciously thinking about what you can do to make somebody feel your presence. It's you being confident enough to be you. Does that make sense? Yes. And also, I'll say this real quick, and this is one of the, the things that people sort of like uh, don't look at is this, right? The reason why a woman feels you is because what you're actually doing is honest. So meaning that like, like, you, like I actually want to make something happen with you, but also on top of that, a lot of times the, mo the reason why the most confident guys are the guys who have really good you know, interactions with women get the women is because when they're talking to the woman, right, they actually believe they're going to get her. They actually believe she wants him. They actually believe it's going to go the way they expect in their head. You understand? So when they're talking to that woman, they want the woman and they expect it to go that way, then she feels that energy. Just like, for example, if you was walking down an alley and somebody came to you and put a gun to your chest and was like, give me your fucking money, and they was like really trying to get at you, you probably feel fear because they're like, oh shit, this motherfucker stepped to me, got the gun to me. Like, he, he's not, he not playing around. So you feel that because he's actually about that. So if you're really about it, a lot of times she feels it. So most guys, even though they think they're about it, they're not really about it because most guys approach women with fear, not with confidence, not with being sure about themselves. So when you approach her with fear, then she not, you're not really about it because you're just talking with fear. You're just interacting with fear. You're just saying words and there's fear behind your words. So if there's honesty and there's real, you know, like actual like energy behind that, that's what makes the woman feel you. You see what I'm saying? I can take the dick off the table based upon my standard. You aren't going to get hold of this dick if you ain't being the woman I need you to be. You need to realize that you need to cook clean. You got to understand that you're not the only woman. And if you can accept that, that's fine. That's just the beginning because you got to work hard for me because I work hard for me. So that means if you if, if you get with me, it's not gonna be easy street because I need to be satisfied because it ain't no happy wife, happy life bullshit. It's happy Steve, happy Steve. Being strong with self, understanding who you are um, is the 
That is the biggest defense to bitch ass weak men. And there's no excuses for the men not to be strong, but see, there's so many forces. And then so many men are embracing weakness. I can't stand weak men. Like I don't even, I don't like to talk to them. It's hard for me to talk to these losers. I've always been a winner at the winner's table. You know, I believe it's a sin to impregnate a woman who can't raise a child, you know, or impregnate a woman who's not fit to be a mother. And I think we have a responsibility in what we see today in these weak ass little feminine boys. I can't tell another man what to do, but I can't dress feminine. I can't wear nail polish. It's just something that I can't do. Why? Because if I'm walking down the street and somebody's having trouble with a flat tire, I want them to feel that they can come to me and ask me, hey man, could you help me out with this? Because those are the type of things that a man will help out with. So I need to look like a man so they can know where to come for help. Yeah, it is such a thing as toxic masculinity in the minds of bitch ass motherfuckers. Talk about masculinity, assertiveness, authenticity, transparency. How can a guy who's straight up and honest with what he does be toxic? If the media can train you to think something bad about it, you hear the word and you want to instantly have a certain reaction. You stop thinking, you start feeling. And when people learn to think and feel and not think through their feelings, that's when they can evaluate a person holistically. And they can say, is this toxic masculinity or did I just hear something I didn't like? And why did I not like it? And they only let me go within myself to see why. I don't never look at no motherfucker and say, oh, that's a toxic masculine motherfucker i never ever had i didn't even know it. that was an invented concept from a weak motherfucker that was like i'm just tired of this motherfucker trying to tell me what to do and bully you over me with this bullshit what's going to make you successful is just understanding who you are and getting your mind right and being happy with who you are that is the thing that's going to really make you successful because after you get all the toys after you get all these things going on you've had sex with all the women you want to have sex with, you traveled all the places, you're still going to be you and you're going to always come back to you. Why do I do this? Why are we even doing this documentary? I'm trying to, I want guys to be in the best position possible. There's no way that I'm raising my voice or calling you a bitch ass nigga because I'm trying to hurt your feelings. I'm calling you a bitch ass nigga because you're doing bitch ass nigga shit. And if you continue doing bitch ass nigga shit, you're going to end up in bitch ass nigga situations. You get what I'm saying? So when I call you a bitch ass nigga, trust me, it's because I love you.